part of free radicals okay so before going to the actual discussion of free radicals first we have to know what is heterolysis and what is homolysis so heterolysis is basically if you consider any bond here we have taken the bond between x atom and y atom so if this bond is broken so there will be two electrons now both these electrons can go to a particular atom now that depends on which one which atom is more electronegative so if y is more electronegative both the electrons will go to towards y and if x is more electronegative then x negative charge that is anion will be formed from the atom x or it may be any group also so this is heterolytic fission where carbocation may be generated if this particular atom is carbon or carb anion may be generated if this y or x if it is carbon but when it is homolytic fission these two electrons one electron will go towards x another electron will go towards y so that is why we will get this type of species where the single electron it is denoted by this type of dot sign and it is known as homolytic fission now the difference between these two types of fission that we have to see most of the reactions in organic chemistry that is mostly ionic reaction now when we are talking about ionic reaction it is basically heterolytic fission because when i am saying ionic reaction basically it will produce some ions so here you can see these are basically cations or anions so that is why ionic reactions they involve heterolytic fission here charged species will be produced if it is carbon atom carrying the negative charge or positive charge it will be called carbocation or carb anion and the overall transformations it takes place within 2 to 3 steps that is in most of the cases usually occurs in solutions and solvents play a major role so depending on what type of solvents we have taken then uh, it affects the reaction and what about homolytic fission homolytic fission leads to species having unpaired electron so see here we have unpaired electron and this is known as free radicals and that is the topic of discussion now in this video basically we will discuss how we can generate them but see what are the difference with ionic reaction in contrast to ionic reactions free radicals can occur in gas in the gas phase as well as in solution in different types of solvent especially it prefers non-polar solvents so unlike the previous case that is heterolytic fission here we can get gas phase reaction reaction also then non-ionic reactions that is the reactions involving homolytic fissions they are more tolerant of spectator functional groups so whatever other functional groups are present spectator means which are not actually taking part in reaction so that is why they are spectator functional groups so they are more tolerant so they will the chance that they will remain intact that is more in case of homolytic fission but not in case of ionic reaction so these are the comparison between heterolysis and homolysis now we will see how we can generate this type of free radicals the first method is homolysis of weak sigma bond so when we have any bond between two atoms and if this sigma bond is weak then homolysis can occur easily now it 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 is possible by thermal homolysis or photochemical first we will see that when it is thermal homolysis then how it will happen now in case of peroxides and azo compounds azo compounds means where you have n double bond n and peroxide means you will have OO linkage. So in this type of compounds, this type of thermal homolysis, it is common. And it, requ it requires temperature around 60 to 80. So it is not very high temperature because it is already weak sigma bond. So we don't, don't have to provide very high temperature. So it will occur very easily. Here you can see in this molecule, we have this OO linkage. So when this bond is undergoing homolysis, we will get one electron on this electron another electron on the other oxygen of this oo linkage so we are getting two same type of radicals fine another example we will see where n double bond n is present and this molecule is known as azobis azo iso butyronitrile this also you can say because uh, two similar types of groups are present so that is why uh, we are we can also use the term this and in short we call this molecule AIBM now this is very common example and this is very famous molecule for the generation of uh, that is the initiation of any 
free radical reaction because radicals can be easily generated from this molecule. Here this carbon nitrogen bond is basically broken and we are getting uh, the single electron on these two carbons. That is these two carbons we are getting single electron and the other electron will also be produced on this nitrogen but these two will together it will pair and ultimately there will be a new bond between two nitrogen atoms. So here we are basically getting these two radicals both are same right and also nitrogen molecule is produced. So see here temperature is not very high. So thermal homolysis it is very common in peroxides and azo compounds. Some other examples of weaker bonds that have been found useful for generating radicals that you can see here that is NN bond, OO bond this you have just seen and halogen halogen bond that we are going to see in the next slide and these are some uh, carbon bromine carbon adding okay. Now there is another method also which I have not mentioned here and that is thermal cracking. Now in thermal cracking that is mainly used for uh, higher alkene where uh, that is very high temperature is required because CC bond breaking it is not weak sigma bond like this so high temperature is required in those cases around 500 or greater than that and uh, that is that I have not mentioned here so I am just discussing homolysis of weak sigma bonds now the next method is photolytic bond homolysis now this is very popular when we have two halogen molecules so it may be bond between two chlorine, bond between two bromine, bond between two iodine. Now in these cases you will get two Cl dot, two Br dot or I dot. Okay. So photolytic bond homolysis that is very common in this type of uh, diatomic halogen molecules. And these processes are important in radical halogenation reaction but we are not going into the details to that because this video is all about generation of uh, free radicals and uh, how these radicals are used that will be topic of another video okay but remember these are important for radical halogenation reaction where carbon hydrogen bond is broken and uh, we get carbon halogen bond that is radical halogenation now we have some advantage of photolysis over thermolysis so in this case it is possible to break strong bonds that is even strong bonds are we can break and which bonds are do not break easily at reasonable temperature. So suppose in a uh, thermally if we are not able to break some bonds then we can do so in a uh, by photolysis method. More specific as energy at only one particular level is transferred to a molecule. So we can here provide energy specifically compared to thermolysis. Fine depending on what type of frequency of uh, light we are using depending on that it is more specific. So these are the advantages of photolysis process over thermolysis. So that is all about homolysis of weak sigma bond. The next method is electron transfer. So electron will be transferred from one species to another species. You can also call it redox process. You can call it reduction but not always that it will be reduction. Obviously see when reduction occurs uh, oxidation also occurs. So obviously from one species that is a point of view of from one species always it has to be reduction and from another species point of view of that species it will be always oxidation so you can call it reduction if uh, that is you are considering that molecule to which electron is transferred because that is reduced or you can also call it addition of an electron now we will see two methods the first one is the action of some inorganic oxidizing agent or reducing agent which is on the organic compounds and it will involve electron transfer and it will produce some radical species or radical ionic species where both ion that is uh, negative charge as well as the radical is generated. So see here we have Fe2 plus. Now Fe2 plus if it is giving one electron to this OO bond. Suppose if I am simply breaking this what will be produced? RO dot and OH dot. Now this Fe2 plus if it is providing one extra electron now this HO dot it will be converted to HO minus and this is as it is as it, it is that is produced here. 
So here we are getting the radical RO dot and hydroxide ion and Fe2 plus this is basically oxidized to Fe3 plus. So in this case Fe2 plus is basically acting as the reducing agent. So it is inorganic reducing agent which we are using for the organic compound ROOH and we are getting the radical RO dot. So this is addition of electron towards ROOH. In the next example you can see we have this FeCl6 3 minus. So here oxidation state of iron is 3 plus. But the species that you are seeing on the right hand side here oxidation state is Fe2 plus. That means here Fe3 plus it is accepting electron. So it is acting as oxidizing agent. So in the second reaction it is acting as oxidizing agent. In the first case it is acting, acting as reducing agent. I am talking about this. Now if you break this wage bond what you will get? There will be O dot and H dot. Now if H dot it is transferring this electron towards iron. Now H will be H dot will be converted to H plus and O dot as it is we are getting. So this is the newly generated radical and uh, the complex is reduced from Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus. Fine. Sometimes alkali metals like lithium, sodium, potassium, they can reduce the carbonyl group of ketones to a deep blue radical anion which is called ketyl. Now why it is called ketyl? Because we have this uh, radical as well as negative charge. So see, it can also generate a radical ionic species. So here this electron, suppose if this C double bond O, if we are thinking as, as if one bond is broken, then we will have single electron over oxygen and carbon, whatever group is present here, that is not important. Now, if this O dot, it is accepting one more electron, it will be converted to this type of O negative and C dot, it is still there. Now, there may be resonance. Now, once it is undergoing resonance, there may be negative charge here and O dot here. But uh, that is only involving resonance. So, this is known as ketyl and it is possible this type of electron transfer. This electron is basically coming from some... Uh, alkali metals, lithium, sodium or potassium. Now these methods until now that you have seen, here basically we are generating uh, radicals from spin paired molecule. That means it is not that the starting material is some radical, we are also getting radicals. The starting material is spin paired molecules, we are generating radicals. But now we will see some examples where generation of radical starting from some other radical. Under this, the first example we are going to see substitution you can also call it abstraction so here as if we have a dot and we have bond between b and c now if a dot is transferring electron to that is if it is taking that suppose here we have two electrons between b and c so this electron and this electron over a if it is making a bond we will get a b and c will be remaining with this electron so this is uh, example of substitution or abstraction. Why substitution? Because here uh, one atom is substituted by other. So that is why substitution or you can say it is B is abstracted by A. Now this is general expression but if we take actual example basically hydrogen and hyd halogen atoms these type of examples are common. So suppose we have RO dot and HBr. Now this RO dot it can capture this H and it will produce ROH plus Br dot. So here Br dot is equivalent to C dot and RO dot is basically A dot and we are getting this new bond between O and H which is equivalent to A and B. The next one is addition. So when it is addition, we have this double bond between B and C. Now as if this A dot, it is added to B and suppose I am breaking this bond. So this electron, this electron together it will make this new bond between A and B and the single electron it will be remaining over C. Now example of this if we take suppose I have taken Br dot. So we are starting from one radical because this gener this is, these are the methods that is generation of radicals from other radicals. So obviously initially you have to take some radicals. So Br dot if it is transferring this electron there will be carbon bromine bond and radical will be generated over this carbon. Okay, so this is A and B as if this is A and B bond 
and C dot. So this is equivalent to C. Next method is uh, elimination. Now in elimination also see starting material it is already it is radical and this electron and if I am considering the electrons uh, two electrons between B and C atom these two electrons together it will make a newly generated bond between A and B and this electron it will be over carbon sorry not carbon it is C. Now example of this is PHCO O dot. Now in this case we can get pH dot plus carbon dioxide. I am writing carbon dioxide in this way. So basically this bond is broken. So there will be two electrons. So this new electron it will make bond with this oxygen and pH will be removed. So pH is equivalent to C here. Fine. So these are the methods that are under generation of radicals starting from other radicals. Now to summarize these methods of generation of radicals, how we can express it? Radicals from spin paired molecules that is you are starting that is the starting material for this process that you have taken that is already spin paired molecules. The first example is homolysis of weak sigma bonds by photochemical thermal method. Remember the OO bond that we have broken or uh, N we have taken some azo compound. So these are the examples under this heading. It may be also electron transfer. You can also call it redox or addition of an electron. And it basically produces two similar type of radicals. But this is only applicable for the first method because it is homolysis of sigma bond. In the second case, you are just getting one type of radical. It is not that you will get two same radicals. Also. It is only applicable for the first method. And the second method that is generation of radicals from some other radicals. Under this, we have seen total three possibilities are there fine and here we are getting we have started from radicals and it is also generating a new radical and a new spin paired molecule which we have not seen in the previous case okay so these are the that is the two methods by which we can generate uh, radicals fine so that is all about this video if you find it helpful please like share and subscribe i will meet you in the next video thank you for your time